Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. We're back with more DIY Dollar Tree Harry Potter signs. Um, we're going to use these different party like hanging directional signs as well as two different um, autumn signs but they come out with signs like this for every different holiday. They're basically yard signs with the stakes on them. So the first thing that we're going to do is get inspiration. <laughs> No, the reason I really wanted to share this with you, because whether or not you're a Harry Potter fan, if you're having a wedding or a birthday party with lots of different stations or a shower with lots of different stations, I wanted to show you how you can take two of these signs um, with a couple of extra pieces and make one long sign. Um, I'm sure it seems very simple, but a lot of people just the concept of, of, of thinking about it outside of the box or maybe it won't hang or it won't stand. I want to share with you that it absolutely will. Um, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to get rid of all the glitter. These signs always have glitter on them. I'm not going to take the pieces off and turn them over. To me, sanding the glitter away is not that big of a deal. If it is to you, then obviously you could just take these boards off and flip them over and staple them back down. But I just find it so much easier to just go ahead and just knock off all of that glitter and extra like um, bumpiness with some sandpaper. And then when you're done with all that, you want to take uh, baby wipes or paper towel and wipes and you want to go ahead and clean it up. Now for the inspiration for this piece um, was found on Pinterest where uh, I found basically a sign that has all the different famous spots or some different famous spots um, on a directional sign like this. And I just thought that would be a really great way to include places that I'm not including. Um, I didn't include different stations at famous stations basically um, at my party so it was just a way to include those things like a little throwback to the cauldron shop and stuff like that so um, but like I said you can go ahead and do whatever works for whatever event you're planning so what I'm showing you here and I'm sorry it's a little off camera to the right there but I'm showing you is if you overlap the steak on one with the steak on the other there's room in the middle to put like two more signs um, that's what I'm adding. That's why we needed this additional, um, this additional like party sign from the summertime. Um, what I'm going to paint one of them in the same green. If you watched the video yesterday, we made an Ollivander sign in this great tealish color green, and we're going to create one of those. And then we're also going to paint the other one in this orange. This is Waverly's chalk paint in pumpkin. The pumpkin is a little bit more translucent than the green was and I kind of felt like I needed two coats of it so we're just going to add another coat off camera you guys don't have to sit there and watch paint dry it's really not necessary <laughs> but for the orange one I thought it would be nice to do the we the Weasley's wizardy wizards Wizzies. <laughs> you say it I'm not going to say it um, but again I got inspiration from the internet and for that one I wanted to do a combination of printed and um, and drawn on and and uh Basically, all of these different signs are going to have different ways that I've trans that I've gotten the words written on there. Some we're going to do handwriting, some are going to be uh, transferred, some of them are going to be painted on. Um, and then you can also use your Cricut or Silhouette or die cut machine or stickers or anything that you can get your hands on. Um, that would be a great way to create the signs as well. Okay. So now what I'm showing you here really quick is basically I need to make a custom color. Um, I wanted to make a sign that had platform nine and three quarters on it. It's a very specific brownish burgundy color um, that I wanted to create, recreate. So I went ahead and I opened my iPad to have a picture of platform nine and three quarters. Um, and I went ahead and I tried to mix the colors. I added crimson red to a little bit of black and a little bit of brown and even a touch of orange just to kind of hew it down a little bit and it came out to be like the perfect color so I went ahead and I painted that top sign because the first thing that you do on your way to the Wizarding World is or, or on to way to Hogwarts is to get onto the platform nine and three quarters that gets you to Hogwarts okay and then we're just you want to plan like I mentioned in the beginning what signs do you want to be where what signs do you need to be the biggest that's another thing that can decide because as you notice with this particular home sweet home sign the word sweet was on a much smaller sign than home and home and as far as this football sign was concerned one of them was shaped like a football so like do I replace that or do I go ahead and use it and work with it and I decided to use it and work with it and I can't wait to show you what we're going to put there 
Um, actually, you might have seen it on the thumbnail. So let me let me not surprise you. <laughs> but for the um, the top one, we're going to go ahead and make it for Diagon Alley, and we're going to make it uh, completely white with black letters. For the middle one, we're going to go ahead and paint it black, um, and then we're going to um, use white letters to write on that um, but I did find that even on white with the dark letters you need two coats of white to cover um, the the words underneath Diagon Alley okay so I could show you guys that I don't have it all together all the time um, I actually thought that this paint um, was the right paint but it was way too watered down so um, we just had to go in with some Waverly ink uh, just to cover it right up again um, I also was very careful not to get any on the brown, but if I did actually get some on the brown, just take your wipe right away and you can wash it right away. Um, and then we're going to set that off to dry and we're going to work on the other one. So now that I know what I want the different signs, or I think I know what the different signs I want to say, I can figure out what colors I need to paint them. So um, that makes a huge difference. Um, when it comes to this, uh, this sign, I'm thinking black brown brown do I want brown with black black with brown do I want it to be browner than the platform nine and three quarters um, it depends on what you want to do with it so that's really what it's all about the inspiration piece had way more colors than I wanted um, it had like bright colors and I was just like no nope, thanks it's, it's really quite all right I don't want to uh, go that crazy um, but what I did was for this one is I went ahead and I put like that muddy black brown down and then I went ahead and I added some red tones to basically um, to just add dimension and layer and age you know not all aging is done um, with darkness over light colors a lot of times um, the lightness over dark colors um, just means that it's like fading from the sun um, so just keep that in mind that's all okay so now once it's all dry we're going to go ahead and add the second coat to um, the the white just to show you that you really do need that once it was dry you could kind of see the word uh, through there but I'm not going to add a second coat to the football because we're going to go ahead and Mod Podge something down um, and I thought that that was not necessary because it's a printed page now if you watched the video yesterday then you saw we made an Ollivander sign that was hanging uh, from a basically supposed to be like a store sign but this of course is directional sign so we're just going to use the same sort of font and the same swirly O with the little wand in it which really gives it that Ollivander's look um, and we're going to make this going towards the right um, the directions on this mean nothing <laughs> but if you're actually using this for a wedding or something pay mindful attention to where you're going to place things so that you can have your arrows pointing in the right direction I actually just wanted these um, two signs to be um, cause the two arrow signs, I think I have them pointing in opposite directions just so it gives more aesthetic. Um, but the two places that they're representing are not far apart from each other. So, <laughs> okay. So for this next, we're going to start with the black, um, and we're going to use, this is just a, a paintbrush with white paint. You can use your chalk marker, um, first, uh, like I mentioned, with the Shrieking Shack yesterday, Nocturne Alley is supposed to be like a really seedy part of town. And the funkier the handwriting, I think that the creepier it looks and I think that the better it came out. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but Nocturne Alley and Diagon Alley are actually like words diagonally and nocturnally. Um, but she created these really cool um street names but anyway side note <laughs> so uh then we're going to move on to the next sign and the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to um put the the cauldron shop it's called pottages i, I want to say you know never make fun of the way somebody pronounces it that means they learned it from reading but i think it's pottages you might say potages because like potato it would be a um a long o but i'm not really sure i figured it's like the word pot but then again like i said she creates her own language so <laughs> so we're just going to basically create the any font i'm comfortable with type of thing we mentioned this um, yesterday um, sometimes you just have to do what you're comfortable with this is the 
wide Sharpie chalk, uh, Sharpie marker from the Dollar Tree. And I like to use it sideways, almost like a calligraphy marker. Um, we're just going to put the Pottage's cauldrons uh, sort of in this really funky made up calligraphy. I just wanted to do what just felt happy to me. Um, and then what we're going to do later, and you'll see it towards the end, is we're going to actually take one of the Dollar Tree's little cauldrons, cut it in half and glue it on that spot. So I knew I wanted to keep that spot empty. Um, so what's next? Next would be Diagon Alley. And Diagon Alley is where you buy all your stuff for your uh, for your wizarding world. That's where you, the wand shop is and the cauldron shop and basically most everything that you can buy that's good for you <laughs> but uh I actually put London on here because that's the, what the inspiration piece had and I thought that was pretty neat um so then uh, what I'm doing is I'm just taking a straight edge and you can tell that's my my beautiful notepad that I got and I'm just going real close to the edge and I'm just going to put a border around it um just to basically give it some sort of I don't know to make it stand out different than Nocturne Alley. Nocturne Alley is where they all sell all the, the seedy stuff. And all the good stuff is in Diagon Alley. So I kind of wanted to make it, you know, even. <laughs> we never made um, the bank, which would have been cool to make a sign with the bank on it. Um, but I really wanted this to be, um, oh, Gringotts Bank, by the way. I just really wanted this to be just like the shops and then directions to the places where you needed to go. So for this last football what are you going to do with this football well I wanted to show you that Honey Dukes has a diamond shaped sign and I thought how cute that it's almost perfect for this football so we Mod Podged the Honey Duke sign on yesterday and I'm showing you today how you can do it as well now if you are not comfortable with your handwriting any of these signs could be Mod Podged we you also can do trans, scratch transfer basically um, you print out the words that you want in the size font that you want. You scratch uh, basically number two pencil on the back and then you flip it over, place it where you want it, and then transfer it over by going over the letters and it will transfer the pencil lead onto what you want to paint. It's harder to do that when you paint on black, but you can definitely do that when you paint on white. And we're just going to do the same Mod Podge technique, a little Mod Podge in the back of the paper, some on the thing that we're Mod Podging, take the leftover brush after you squeegee it and just coat over it with the little bit of Mod Podge we have. Now, Platform 9 and 3 quarters was, and Hogwarts were a Cricut cutout that I did, um, which I'm going to show you in a upcoming video. But I did a Cricut DIY for the t-shirts back in July, okay? So now we're going to assemble them. We're going to use some Dollar Tree screws. They're actually kind of short, and they work perfectly because you don't want the screw to be any thicker than the two depths of the yard stakes or else you might chip one of your signs so what I'm basically doing is I'm overlapping the top one behind the bottom one because the bottom one um, just for balance we want to do that so that the bottom one will go in the ground um, and then the signs that we're going to stick in the middle will be covering where they're overlapping and it's kind of going to make it all disappear um, so what I'm doing is I'm laying down the two boards between that I want between them and then I'm going to go ahead and screw them in. Again, these are really, really shallow screws. If they're too deep, you don't have to screw them in all the way. There is no rule that says the screw has to be in all the way when you're doing this like cute little inexpensive sign, okay? Because um, you don't want it to come through. That one came through just a tiny bit, but you don't want it to come through. Um, I just realized this very second that the... Weasley sign is not I did not create the Weasley sign on camera I am so sorry basically with the we with the Weasley sign I just took the W that I printed off the internet because it's a very specific W cut it out basically covered it with clear contact paper to almost create like a lamination and then I just use rubber uh, rub, rubber rub on transfer letters um, or little stickers. I think they might have been little stickers. I think I tried the transfer and I was having trouble. So they're just little stickers to actually spell out the Wizarding Weasleys, Wizarding Weasleys, Weezers, Weezers. Yeah, it's a tongue twister. Um, <laughs> but now what I'm doing is I'm going to attach the cauldron. I just told you like I cut the cauldron in half. I made sure that the handle was on the side that I was going to keep. I put hot glue all around it and I just stuck it on that cauldron sign. And now I'm just taking a, believe it or not, a little dowel. 
um, the end of a dowel, I think it is actually. And I'm going to create kind of a wand. Um, oh, you know what it wasn't even, was it a dowel? It might have been a piece of chipboard left over. But what I decided to do was to put it in, it was a dowel. I put it in my screw gun. I held the, um, the sandpaper in my hand and I let it spin in my hand. Basically just to create a taper on um, the wand. And then I'm going to glue it on Ollivander's sign. I did like the three-dimensional aspect of the different, um, like to add the dimension to the different signs. I did like that. Um, Weasley's, the Ollivander's, and the, and the, um, the, oh my, I'm so sorry, and the, and the cauldron shop all have <laughs> something dimensional on them. Oh my goodness. I, 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 I need a break. <laughs> Um, but what I'm doing here is I've turned it inside out, uh, basically put the part that I pointed in the drill gun. Then I took hot glue and I spun the drill gun as I glued the hot glue on there just to create a little like handle. You know, when you get a wand, sometimes you have a little handle on it. It's carved or whatever. I don't know what I'm saying. Um, but normally I would just paint this, but I was like tired at this point. I was like, nope, I'm just going to glue it on there. It looks good enough. I'm over there cracking myself up, cracking my sister up. My sister's cracking me up. I can't. Um, but I went ahead and I just added it to the um, the screw that came through the board. So I just uh, screwed that on just to make it disappear. <laughs> I know sometimes you got to go with what you got. Um, but I love the way it turned out and I'm sorry you didn't get to see me, um, put the, the, uh, cricket words on those two signs, but we're going to do it here in a minute on these other room signs. Okay. Then we have like cute little skull hands and then there's obviously everybody has to have a dementor. I was in a little better shape when it started, but he's been through a few things. So that's that. This cute little sign here that tells you where everything is. We had a little bit of weather, so I wanted to keep it in the house for the uh, for the night of the party. Um, so now I'm going to take two, uh, four of these signs, excuse me, which is basically two sets because. Um, we used there each each one of these hanging party tiki signs has three different signs on it. We used two for the directional sign, and then we're going to use the one whole one and one last piece, the last four pieces to make room signs. Basically, I wanted to show where the four houses were. So just to give you an idea, um, Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff were at a hotel. <laughs> But the Slytherin and Gryffindor rooms were here at the house. But I wanted to make everybody a sign so that they knew where they were staying. Um, the signs for the different houses are uh, red, yellow and black for Hufflepuff, uh, burgundy and gold for Gryffindor, or maroon and gold. It's red and gold. I mean, you know, it's there's official and then there's what people do and then there's what people have translated into like for example Ravenclaw is technically blue and bronze um, and it's an eagle but you often see a raven and you often see it in gray or silver so um, you want to make it continuous with what you're doing with you know like the stuff that you're buying or do you want to make it real to the book that's your option <laughs> But we're going to just take four of these signs. We're going to paint one yellow. The yellow needs a couple coats. One is going to be that burgundy color. Then I turned out that that burgundy color was a little too dark. The one we used for platform nine and three quarters. So I'm going to add some red on top of it. One we made in this navy blue, which was straight out of the bottle. I think it's called Midnight Sky from Cracker, no, Cracker Barrel. Why do I keep calling it Cracker Barrel? Apple Barrel. Maybe I need to go to Cracker Barrel. <laughs> the uh the raven the the ugh, the slytherin is just green and the yeah that's all four of them <laughs> sorry now as far as printing the letters on the cricket um i have a diy tutorial on how i printed the letters and the pictures for my cricket for my iron on t-shirts i also have another video coming in the future um, of where we printed them for um, we i put everybody's name on a bottle which didn't really work out great but maybe you can learn from my mistakes um, and 
it's going they're going to be on there too but this is a specific harry potter font which is free to download um, all over the internet and then you can just add it to your font list on your computer and then it will come on to your you'll be able to use it on um, any of the Cricut Design Spaces. Cricut Design Space does let you use the fonts that are already downloaded to your device, okay? So I had to do these on the computer because you can't really download a font to your iPad or your phone. Or if you can, I don't know how to do it. <laughs> so all I've done is just paint in the house colors. Once again, I'm telling you that we needed two coats for the yellow. I also felt that the yellow yellow was just a little too yellow and not quite that gold yellow that Hufflepuff is. So I just added a tiny bit of orange to it just to make it like that gold yellow. And, um, and that's it. And then we went ahead and printed out and cut out the, uh, the font. And I basically called them all common rooms. So it's like the Ravenclaw common room, the Gryffindor common room and such and so on. Now, I normally don't just like, oh, it's all this painting. You just watch me paint. But I wanted to show you how the colors got developed. Um, that is something that people ask me about in the comments quite often. Like, how did you get to that particular color yellow when I saw so you put the first color yellow was on really light? I wanted to show you that you can blend the colors. And you can see here that I'm actually like adding the orange to what was yellow, adding some yellow to the orange, and then blending in sort of that um, uh, aged sort of a little bit of black a little bit of white um, and then this I showed you I, I used the same red that was platform nine and three quarters but it was way too dark so I just took regular crimson and I lightly brushed it on top I didn't want the sign to be crimson but I didn't want it to be quite burgundy either so I kind of like blended it on top so it would look again aged but not uh, bright red or too dark burgundy Okay, and I'm just gonna take my wipe and wipe it off just to blend it in a little bit. So there's different texts, you, you can use dry brushing, you can, do, um, you can do removal of paint, adding of paint, scraping of paint, all of those things will help you get the dimensions that make it more realistic. Now, I will tell you that my sisters, hi Alicia, hi Janie, were rock stars at this party. They were helping me weeding everything that you possibly could they were amazing. They just wanted my party to be as amazing as I wanted my party to be. And I do seem like everybody had a really good time. We had a lot of fun. Um, just being 50 and having a party that would be like a child's party, but like in an adult version, just made me feel young again, um, which I really needed to feel. Because um, I kind of felt like it's a new start to a new beginning. So um, if you've not worked with Cricut vinyl before you basically take transfer tape um, you weed you basically print it you weed it you take your transfer tape and then you transfer it with the squeegee um, the transfer tape that I used here was actually the Cricut brand transfer tape I don't think <clears throat> excuse me I don't think I'll use that again because it really was very sticky um, I had a lot of trouble removing <laughs> it from the letters and from the paint now one of the tips is you can take the transfer tape and you can put it on your fabric, like on, on your shirt or whatever, or once you lift the vinyl. But I don't see why that's necessary, especially when it's more expensive than like clear contact paper from the Dollar Tree. So my personal tip that I found works for me is I'm going to use clear contact paper from the Dollar Tree. <laughs> I find that to be a lot easier. Okay. So all I've done is I, again, just like what we did to directional signs before, decide where your sign is going to be. If you're going to hang it on the left or the right of the door and which direction it's going to be before you go ahead and print your letter, put your letters on there. All right. And that's it. So as I finish this, I just want to thank everybody for joining me. Hopefully again, even if you're not a Harry Potter fan, you found some ideas or inspiration on these two videos. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe. And when you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like it. It really does help my channel. And as always, you guys take care. God bless. And we'll see you next time. Bye.